Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. We are live in the garden. It's seven o'clock on Thursday, the 27th of August. This beautiful August weather. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mr. Fothergills and Cobra Garden. Well, here we go. Lovely August weather, isn't it? I don't know what it's like with you. Hopefully it's a bit better. We're here in North Yorkshire and we've got some pretty horrible weather at the moment. It's been fairly dry for most of the day, but then about five o'clock, the heavens opened. Uh, this is quite nice compared to what it was an hour ago. It was absolutely gushing it down. I think we had about an inch of rain in just over an hour, but we're not going to let that spoil tonight. Hopefully you're sitting somewhere nice and warm. Certainly Sean and Jill are nice and cosy there, just behind me, well in front of me in the summer house there, probably just enjoying themselves. They probably got cocktails and drinks and all sorts of things like that. And they've made me stand outside in the rain, but I'm not bothered. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to answer your questions. And we've already had some questions that have been sent in, which is great. If you've got a question you've still got time to do it with us just put a message on our Facebook page and Jill will pick it up and bring it out to you uh, we're gonna have a look around the garden Sean went out earlier we'll do that in a while and then we're gonna catch up with some things that Jill and I got up to in the vegetable plot earlier on in the week so we've got lots of things happening so hopefully we've got some questions that have come through um, if we've got a couple we'll answer a few thank you oh have you all right coming out in the wet you don't mind don't get too wet we've got an umbrella if you want right okay so we've got a few veggie questions just here um, we've got this one from Carol Wall hello Carol hope you're nice and dry where you are I'm not it's actually running down my neck now um, you like the look of our cauliflower um, yes we showed that uh, earlier on in the week didn't we a cauliflower that we harvested she says hers aren't as big any tips well certainly uh, cauliflowers are quite greedy they like lots of nitrogen and they need to be growing early in the season and they don't like a checking growth so when you put them out make sure they don't get that check keep them watered keep them growing and give them a high nitrogen feed either a granular fertilizer dry blood or something like that is ideal or if you can get a liquid feed then that's good as well there's still time it depends on the variety as long as they're looking healthy and they're growing then there's time for them to get bigger but if they are tiny well try again next year but at least you've got some uh, Lucy Day has been in touch. Lucy's got loads of green tomatoes. Um, she wants to know if she's running out of time for the tomatoes. The plants are quite a bit overgrown. Um, she's been feeding once a week. Is there still time for them to ripen? Well, I think there is, Lucy. I mean, obviously, we need this rain to stop. We've had this now for quite a while. It's getting quite cool at night as well. Um, I'm not sure if your tomatoes are inside or outside, uh, but what they need to ripen is warm. So what we've got to hope for is some drier weather and some sunshine which will help them right and keep giving them the high potash once a week they probably don't need much else in the way of water especially if they're outside um, if you can in any way cover them over with something if you've got a piece of polythene that you can create a, a temporary tent or shelter over them to keep the worst of the weather on them that will certainly help but i think you've got time i'm hoping we're going to have some lovely warm weather in september which is just what they like um, Jeanette White, um, is this is about plum tomatoes. Um, they're getting uh, a bit big. I can't read Jill's writing, um, but the skins are thick. Why? Well, that um, can be a problem with plum tomatoes. They, they can be a bit thick skinned anyway. It's just the nature of what they are. But I think it also might be the weather this year because we've, we've had really changeable weather. We started hot and dry. We've gone cool. We've had wet. It's been up and down with the, the temperatures. So if they've also so dried out a little bit maybe um, at some point that can toughen the skins but generally speaking plum tomatoes can tend to be a little bit thick but they are absolutely wonderful to eat and so tasty um, and then we've got a couple of courgette questions here this one is from Dawn Upton she says my courgettes are flowering but the courgettes are not growing just withering up am I watering uh, too much um, and then Shirley Wright also says that her courgettes are growing but then they turn brown at the end and rotten she's watering and feeding with phostrogen and Karen Laird says lots of flowers on the courgettes but lots with no fruit behind them well 
Karen, your problem is they are the male flowers. Uh, courgettes have male and female flowers. The males just have a thin stalk. The females have the little fruits at the back. So you can take the male flowers off, um, but you can often get more male flowers if the weather turns cool and wet. So that's the reason for it. As for Dawn and Shirley, I think the problem is this. Uh, I've got a couple of courgettes here that I've just been and got out of the garden here um, and this one is completely rotted here I don't know whether you can see that one but the end of this courgette has completely rotted off and it's just gone all horrible and manky inside and this one was forming and the flowers gone and already we can see that that one is rotten it's purely the weather it's nothing you've done if the weather had been lovely and warm and sunny and dry they would develop but what happens is they get to this stage the water gets in where the flower is and they just rot so it is purely down to the weather I'm afraid so there's nothing you can do you could actually cut that off and still eat it beyond it but they're not going to grow and develop any more than that so um, have we got any more on there we'll do one more and then uh, we'll have a little look around the garden I think because I just need to dry off for a couple of minutes and to see if I can sneak into the summer house with these two this one is from Marilyn Hodgson um, <clears throat> Marilyn is growing Colette um, um, in a cushion storage box. I'm not quite sure what a cushion storage box is. A box, um, <clears throat> a box for storing cushions. Good. She's covered them with ultrafine mesh but still have white fly. She's using SB invigorator but the white fly are thriving and the leaves are drooping as well. Um, I hope you've taken the cushions out when you did it. <clears throat> Colette, for those that don't know, is a cross between kale and Brussels sprouts and instead of the tight buttons on the stem you get these little like little mini open cabbages really flavoursome and quite nutty the the mesh will stop the butterflies but it won't stop the brassica whitefly which is a type of whitefly that just lives on brassicas they'll get in um, I would just disturb them as much as you can they're, they're more of a nuisance than anything um, I'm not sure why the leaves are drooping because I can't imagine that it's due to lack of no rain unless you live in the Sahara Desert maybe but make sure they are moist um, but yes I think you've just got to keep your hand on them it is a problem a perennial problem and they're really difficult to control of the white fly but they should still grow give them a feed it's not too late to give them a bit of fertilizer just sprinkle it around the roots because hopefully they've got another couple of months to grow so you are not wasting your time so I think what we'll do now uh, is have a look around the garden earlier on today before it started to bucket it down Sean had a wander around and just looked at some of the plants to see what's looking good and he's, he's added it out the rubbish. garden always looks so much better doesn't it when the uh, when it's not chucking it down with rain and despite the weather because we have needed this rain it's been dry for quite a while through the summer um, and it will really freshen things up it just all came at once one or two things are looking a bit floppy not only is it rained heavily today but earlier on in the week and last weekend we had torrential rain and we also had really high winds one or two plants um, lost some branches a lovely Circe's forest pansy one or two of the big branches snapped off in the gale so they've been pruned out and one or two have been doing a bit of pruning this is a lovely cotinus this is a variety that's called grace it's got these 
lovely, lovely sort of pale leaves on there, not as deep as the royal purple. Um, and it can get very floppy indeed. So what I tend to do is if it's flopping over other, other plants and it's doing it just a little bit, as you can see down here, um, then what you can do if you want to, and they're in the way, if they're not in the way, leave them, but it won't do any harm just to chop one or two of these off um, just it just smartens it up it doesn't spoil it in any way at all just keeps it bushy and compact and if it's getting a bit top heavy and you're worried that the rain is going to snap it off or the wind again just take one or two off so we're not giving it a round shape we're just doing it sort of nice and natural and then these don't throw them away if you're picking any flowers out of the garden just simply strip these off um, and then put those in a bucket of water and then when you pick a few flowers mix these in with it and it really is nice to add that little bit of foliage in there. Another one that's gone down over the last week is this. This is the lovely pink Annabelle. Um, a week or so ago it was standing high, probably 50, 60 lovely pink heads on there but then we had the gales last weekend and they've just completely flop now with the weight of the rain on them today. Now I'm going to leave it while it's raining there's no point in trying to do anything but hopefully within the next day or two when it does dry up and the rain's gone off I'll give them a shake and what I'm going to do is to get some canes or pea sticks or if you've got any plant supports lift these up a little bit and just put some supports around there just to give them that little bit of support. Um, if they've gone too far, then again, what you can do is take some of the heads off because there's a lot of weight in those heads, especially when they're wet. So that's fine to, to tidy those up a little bit. So that's the sort of thing we do at this time of the year. And, you know, down in the border at the bottom, this is my sort of little mini woodland border. Uh, where I've got my trees and ferns and lots of foliage and stem colours in the winter and then we get the spring bulbs um, and I love it just for all the different shades of greens and golds that we've got in there you know there's not a lot of flower at the moment in here it's mainly gone there's a bit of hydrangea coming and there will be other bits but again you can do a little bit of tidying up if you want to um, this lovely liatris here lovely purple flowers have gone over now um, and we've just got the heads on them so these die down to a type of corm and they will come back every year so what I'm going to do with them is again it's just a tidying up job I want to leave the foliage um, some people leave them on but I, I'm not very keen on them when they get to this stage so I would sooner in my garden just snip them down and tidy them up a little bit leaving the foliage because that will then carry on growing that will die down to build them up for next year so there's all sorts you can do but try and do it when it's a bit of a dry day so I think we've got a couple more questions that have just come in um, <clears throat> I'll just see if I can wake Jill up because I think she was just having a little bit of a snooze so which ones have we got Mrs Fish and then they've just come in live oh these have just come in live oh that's good um, dear Martin, we're sitting on the settee with a box of chocolates, oh. champagne, uh, lovely warm and dry. Um, hope you're okay. Okay, right, well, we'll do that in a moment. So Rachel Friend has sent us uh, a question and she'd like to know what to do with her tiger lilies. Um, do I cut them down or leave them? And uh, she's also sent in a picture of a mystery plant that's growing in the garden. Well, with your tiger lilies, like any other lilies, if you've got them in the garden, as we did on pots and trials a week or so ago, just deadhead them. So take the flowering stalk down to just below the last of the faded flowers. Then they will carry on growing. All that foliage will die down and help to build the bulb up for next year. Um, and Rachel, your mystery plant that you sent in is a seeding of um, Eryngium planum, which is sometimes known as the sea holly. This one hasn't got a prickly leaf. It's got quite a soft leaf, but it will send up a flower spike and a very lovely flower on there. Uh, Brian Tismond, um, I have a number of Sempervivums which seem to die off um, and then they send out a flowering shoot. Is this normal? Um, well, um, yes, it is. I've got a little pot of Sempervivum just here. Um, and these aren't particularly brilliant ones. In fact, let me get one that looks a little bit better. Um, so we've got a Sempervivum just here. 
And as you can see, it's flowered there and the original plant that had the flower on has died. But what it does do is send out all these lovely offshoots. So what you can do with them is this piece will die. I will probably knock this out of the pot, separate those into individual plants and I'll get, you know, another half a dozen plants that I can pot up and grow them on. So yes, that's what Sempervivums do. Um, Wendy Turner wants to create a flower cutting bed. Any suggestions for cut flowers? Well, it's sky's the limit. I mean, Alstrom areas are a lovely perennial that keep coming back. Scabious will keep coming back. Pyrethrum will keep coming back year after year. When it comes to annuals, then larkspurs and nigella, all wonderful things that you can sow from seed. And it's not too late to start some off ready for next year. In fact, it's the perfect time and we're gonna cover it later on next week. We're gonna sow hardy annuals to flower in the cutting garden next week. So tune in for that, Wendy. But for now, you know, get planning for next year. That's the thing to do. Uh, Jane Elizabeth, uh, when can I split hostas? I prefer to do it in late winter and early spring, um, simply because then uh, you, you can dig them up just as they're starting to grow. You can see where they are and they divide really easily then. I know some people do it in the autumn, but uh, I find if you've got a wet winter, then they can rot off. So I prefer to do it in early spring, but autumn you could do if you wanted to. And finally, uh, for this piece, just before we go to something a little bit different, and uh, I can just, just shake off a little bit, um, Angela Yeomans, um, his growing peonies, and they're quite big, and I've, uh, I've cut them, uh, my peonies are quite big, and I've out or out it looked it's jill's spelling i do apologize and angela and have outgrown the space it looked like cut um, when can i move them well yeah i mean this year peonies have grown well because they've quite enjoyed the the, the rain that we've had in the latter part of the summer and they've made a lot of foliage so if they are outgrowing their space then certainly they can be moved lots of people say you can't move peonies but they will move quite successfully the time to do it is either in the autumn or again in early spring just before they start to grow so if you're doing them in the autumn wait until the foliage is dying down and then you can cut them down and lift them um, and then replant them in their new position where they've got just a little bit more room or you do exactly the same in the spring but the thing to be careful of is when you plant them make sure you plant them at the same depth don't go any deeper if you plant your peonies too deep then they will grow and they will produce masses and masses of flowers now i'm sorry if the camera's shaking a little bit it's not because sean's been drinking it's he's trying to hold the camera in one hand and he's trying to do something with the laptop on the other um, so yes when you do plant them make sure that you don't plant them too deep because they'll grow mad but they won't flower so prepare the ground really well uh, plenty of organic matter and give them a bit more space and remember they like a fairly sunny position to grow in so don't put them where they're shady or anything like that so um, we've got more questions that are coming in uh, and I will answer some more in a few minutes time um, but Earlier on in the week, we had a lovely day. It's hard to believe it when you look at the weather now, but on Monday, we had a glorious sunny day and Jill and I were out in the veg plot, harvesting a few things and just doing bits and bobs in the vegetable garden. So this is what we got up to. So Mrs Fish, what are we up to um, with fresh produce from the veg plot today? Oh, we've today? got so much coming from the garden. We've got uh, courgettes coming out of our ears, we've got runner beans happening and cucumbers as well. So we've just got loads of stuff all okay. coming at the same time. Well, I've, I've picked a couple of courgettes, but there's a bit of difference there's in size there. That's a whopper and that's a <laughs> tiny little tinky one. Well, that one, that sort of size and a little bit bigger, that's perfect for eating raw. I love raw courgette. Uh, so I would just chop that up, add that into salads. You could add it into some coleslaw as well, gives mm -hmm. it an extra crisp. That one, probably, I wouldn't want to eat it raw, just because it's very fleshy inside. Um, the skin's still nice and soft, but that's ideal. I'll chop that up, um, maybe add that in with some cherry tomatoes and just roast that yeah. um, as a side dish. So still a courgette, not quite a marrow yet, is it? No. Because they go really hard skinned if you want to store them. So, But yeah, the secret is keep picking them little and often, because in the course of about a week, it will go from that 
to that so you've got to get them early <laughs> so what we're going to do with it then right well say two of these or one sort of medium size i um i'm going to make a courgette dip which Ooh. is really nice for having with drinks on the patio on a summer's evening Ooh, which lovely. is lovely um so get a grater and just um coarse grate it great great courgettes and then stir fry those in some hot oil really quickly only two or three minutes because you don't want to lose the green color of the courgette and you don't want them to go too soggy um, and then let them cool so here's some that I've done already and you can see they've still got that lovely dark color on the skin but we've still got that texture so they're going to be added this is such a simple one to do um, into um, some yogurt you could use I've just got some natural yogurt here you could use sour cream you could use mayo or a bit of a mixture creme fraiche even would work um, so I've got one courgette there and probably about 250 mils of um, dip of yogurt uh, so all I'm going to do is just add that in. So very simple, isn't really it? Really simple. simple. And then you can add some extra flavours in there if you want to. So I've got some uh, chopped walnuts. You could use pine nuts as well. That would be really nice. So add those in. They add a bit of extra crunch. And then you could experiment with some herbs as well. So I've just got some marjoram here. Um, which is growing in abundance in our garden. You could use parsley as well, which would give another suppose, sort of dark green colour to it. I suppose you it. could put mint in it as well, couldn't you? You could, If you wanted yes. that lovely fresh minty yeah, flavour. Yeah, no. And then just stir that through. That looks good enough That's to it. eat, doesn't That's it? That's easy. It. And the advantage of having fried them is, is that they're not going to go watery in the dip. So, you know, you haven't got to worry about stirring it again. It will keep in the fridge quite nicely for couple of days right. just give it a little stir through um, but all we need now is some chopped up veg to eat with that so you could have it with some um, sticks of courgette or some red pepper that would be really nice or some carrot Ooh, we could just yes. have crisps with it yeah can mm. we try that later then we can I think we might even let Sean have a go with it okay yeah, yeah no, okay that sounds fair good good right um now broad, uh, runner beans not broad beans the broad beans have long finished the runner beans are coming thick and fast at the moment from the garden oh we've got so many so many um and again the secret with them is pick them little and often otherwise they do get a bit seedy and I noticed one or two of these have just got the seeds developing in them so they're not too bad but you don't want to get too big and the more you pick them the more they flower and the longer they'll keep going and they should with a bit of look, looking after you should be able to keep your beans going and keep picking them right the way through till the end of September I don't bother with them very much you would make me do these wouldn't you and put them in the freezer but I tend to just put those on the compost heap when he's not looking mm. um, to me that's the sort of ideal size a little bit bigger as well you can go but I don't I don't think oh yeah maybe that sort of size yeah. some of these are a bit marked I've noticed they're a bit scary yeah looking, but it, it, it's not a disease or anything um, that is uh, we've had quite a lot of windy weather and I grow mine in a wigwam and they've just been blowing over and I think it's just when they're tiny little beans and they've got soft skin they've just rubbed um, but it's certainly not a fungal disease so any little blemishes don't worry about them like that okay um so i freeze mine i just keep a bag on the go all the time in the freezer um, and i found this handy gadget mm. um, a couple of years ago we went to some friends house and they were using this and i'd never seen one before um, and it's just a bean slicer and stringer um, so it's really handy so i do this with all our beans now it's really quick and easy it's got a little blade on the top for topping and tailing so just it's really sharp oh, it make is. sure you don't yeah. get your finger in there and then it's got um, a sort of funnel there to put your beans and so that guides it and it's flexible so you can do small beans and yeah. thick beans and thin beans and then it's got three four blades there so you just push that through but the clever thing is is it strings the beans at the same time so those edge bits that don't go clever, through isn't it? and then you've got nice the beans coming strips. out into long so thin strips that's instead of having to slice, slice them into those little, i noticed when we were at my sister's recently she actually uses scissors when she does hers. she prepares oh, right. the bean and then she got a big pair of scissors and just cut oh, them okay. into slices well this i just i prefer eating them like this i don't know don't know why and then so i've got loads of the strips here so put them all together and then just slice them into the lengths that you like so i usually do a couple of inches like that and then do you want to bag? The next bit. So these so are all going in the freezer. They're perfect. So that's probably a, a good couple of portions there. So I put them into a freezer bag. Now I know this looks like a huge bag for so few beans, and I will do those later, apart from the big ones. Um, but like I said, I like to keep them on the go, a bag on the go. 
So all I'll do is just flatten those out and then you don't get them frozen in a big clump at the bottom right. of the bag. Flatten them out in the bag. So you'll keep adding to this as you yeah. keep... Yeah, so yeah. as I get another batch, I'll just open it up and, okay. and, uh, and do put some more into freeze. So flatten them out in the bag as much as you can. And, and then I'm for? giving you oh, that. Right. <laughs> so gather the freezer bag because it's quite important to get rid of as much air as you can so that ah, you're not getting any so moisture crystals. So you're going to suck the air, so you're gonna suck just, the air yeah. out of that. You've got to hold the... Well, hold you can that. hold that. Oh, okay. It's a four-man job. It's, yeah. So suck, 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 suck. Yeah, and then take the straw out and seal <sighs> it straight away. So you've got the beans nice and flat on the bottom of the bag. So those can go in the freezer. And then um, when you open it to put some more in, they'll just be all be frozen individually. So you can right. just push those down to the bottom of the bag. Clever. Do it all again. Keep some flat in yeah. the freezer. Good, good. And then finally, cucumbers are coming thick and fast as well in the polytunnel. Um, we've had some pretty rough weather but it's been warm in there and with regular watering regular feeding and again picking them little and often so that the young ones have got time to develop we're getting quite a few so we tend to get a bit of a surplus don't we we do this one's probably a little it's bit, a bit big, too but, big but you don't have to waste it, it no this is perfect <clears throat> for making into a drink um, and it's a cucumber fizz Ooh. so i'm just going to um cut it in half uh, across and then in half lengthways because a big problem with um cucumbers is the amount of liquid that they have and if you're using it in a dip um, just adding some in chopped up cucumber into mm -hmm. a yogurt it can get really watery um, so you can't make it ahead of time and in, even in a salad as well so the best way is to get rid of some of those seeds because that's what holds a lot of the water yeah. so I've cut it in half lengthways um, and all you need to do to get rid of the seeds is just scrape down with a teaspoon that's a clever little tip yeah and it gets rid of it on oh, look at all that liquid in there you do so have that these would, good little tips. We don't want to yeah. water our drink down too we don't, much, not do we? Too much. That, no, we don't, no. <laughs> that no. wouldn't be good. It's not the sort of thing you think of, isn't it? Oh, I'll just have a drink of cucumber juice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, but wait, and all will be revealed. Yeah. So. And you can do that, even if you're not doing this cucumber fizz, if you just want to slice them and have them in salads, not everybody likes the seed. So that's a good way no. just to get rid of the seed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just do this one extra, because right. you want about half a cucumber but this was a fairly short one wasn't it so I'm okay. going to use to use that one so you can get rid of that I'm just going to chop that up not too big and then that goes into your liquidizer okay like that so that's about what half a cucumber yeah half a half, half a, a normal cucumber. length cucumber okay, if you're growing because we're growing the smaller ones yeah. aren't we so um that is okay uh, you could use a whole one for that right and then the magic ingredients uh that change this cucumber into a drink are some elderflower cordial so you want for a one cucumber half cucumber you want probably about 100 ml of elderflower cordial so pour that in bit more because that's Put nice that there, and then some mint so just chop some mint up okay um just doesn't need to be too fine and do you remember we chopped flavor. some mint plants back a week or so ago and they look at them growing like mad already so you can get that lovely lovely fresh mint so i'm just gonna what quite small pieces Jill. Uh, well yeah it's gonna get blitzed in the liquidizer so it's um just roughly chopped is fine okay oh i see it will chop it more in there will it yeah I don't get out much. And look. <laughs> I really like this tool. What do you call this? I knew you were going to ask me that. It's a Missoula. Missoula? I think. Is don't it? quote me. Don't I've just suddenly thought the bean slicer, while he's doing that, the bean slicer, um, you can, can I say where you can get it from? I see well, no I, reason why not. I got it from Lakeland, um, but they are on Amazon as well. So, uh, but Lakeland's a bit cheaper. Right, okay, that's okay. fine. Stick right. that in. Okay, if you can buy your knife, just scrape that off. Yeah. There you go, all that Good. lovely fresh garden And mint. then that's it. So what we're going to do is blitz that into a puree. So forgive the noise for a minute. Oh, delightful. Cucumber soup. Now we wouldn't want to drink that like that because it's going to be quite bitty. Okay. Um, so what I will do is pass that through a sieve and get rid of all that any, any sort of fleshy bits um, and then we're going to use that in a drink right. so that's the base of your drink so it's like making a cocktail that's some lovely cucumber puree with the mint and the elderflower makes it really nice, nice. and Can fresh I smell that? Mm. 
Oh yeah, because you've got the cucumber. The mint's mint, really good with it, and, and the elderflowers in the there elderflower as well. As yeah, well. no, that's good. Yeah. It looks pretty horrible like it does, that, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Um, but um, you are going. We're going to use that as the base for drink. So you can put some of that into a nice glass and then you can top it up with whatever you fancy. So you could put it with some sparkling water, you could have it with lemonade, or you could have it with some Prosecco if we've got any in the I fridge. I think it's worth celebrating nice and cold. later. It's got to be cold. So we'll finish that off, or you yeah. will, and then later yeah. we'll have the courgette dip and oh, yes. some cucumber fizz nice. to end off. Very nice. Well, I think what we'll do now is answer a few more of your gardening questions. Uh, you can't believe that that was only Monday and look at it, by Thursday the weather's changed to this. So it was a glorious afternoon, so it was good to be out in the garden. And we are going to try those dishes in just a few minutes time. But before that, just a, a few shout outs from people that are watching us live on Facebook. Uh, Anne Joslin says she enjoys watching us. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Dee Godden, thanks for all the gardening tips and to Mrs. Fish for her yummy recipes. I can vouch for the yummy recipes. Rachel Friend, thanks for all your tips and advice. Um, and we've also had a hello to all of us from Southfield Farm. Hello, Southfield Farm. And Richard Hollenby loves the modern vibe to vibe to pots and trowels. Thank you, Richard. The check is in the post. Uh, right, we've just got a few more questions to finish us off and then um, we can taste Jill's delicious things that she's made and I can get out of my wet soggy coat and go and sit in the summer house. Um, this is from Wendy Riley um, and it's for Charlie who says, how do I know when my uh, chilies are ready. Charlie is 10 years old and growing chilies. Well done, Charlie. Charlie, they will ripen to red, so I don't know what colour they are at the moment, but if they're still green, they will eventually go a very dark green and almost a bit of a purpley colour, then they'll turn to red. So keep them fed with a high potash feed um, and they will ripen for you. Um, we've got Val Turner. Um, have you got any clue why my four pots of calla lilies only produced two flowers this year. Three of the pots were bought in 2018 and one is a bit older. I think it's probably they're a little bit either overcrowded in the pots Val or they might be a little bit hungry. Um, I had some that did exactly the same. They flowered for a few years then we suddenly just got foliage. So what I did this spring and now isn't the time to do it so you've got to wait until next spring uh, is divide them. So keep watering, keep feeding them for the time being and let them die down naturally overwinter them somewhere frost free almost let them dry off and then next spring just as they look as if they're shooting knock them out of the pot divide them put them into some fresh compost in a better pot and hopefully you'll get flowers next year vicky carr watched pots and trowels video of me trimming the beach hedge and wonders if it's the first trim of the year and how old's the hedge vicky's thinking of growing one as a screen in her garden well the hedge is probably about 15 or 16 years old um, and um, but it will get to that sort of shape and size in I think about four or five years after planting um, and we tend to just cut it once a year at this time of the year maybe I give it a bit of a trim in the winter when it's dormant just to make sure it's a good shape but that is it basically we let it grow through the spring and the summer and then tidy it up at this time of the year and it makes a really good hedge although Jill doesn't like it because she says it's a messy hedge because as you probably know beech retains the old leaves through the winter you get these lovely golden brown leaves on there which I think are great but then in the spring when the new leaves start to come through it pushes the old leaves off and they blow around the garden but that's all part of it. Um, Mike has asked about carrots he wants to know when they're big enough to harvest. Mike basically just have a little dig around the top and you'll see the colour of the carrot and if they're sort of you know an inch or you know two and a half centimetres in diameter they're ready but if you leave them they'll grow a bit bigger so you just got to do a little bit of exploring and similar really for Sandra Smith she wants to know when the beetroot are ready to dig up again it's when you want to lift them some people like to lift them when they are getting all really soggy now uh, can we have waterproof paper in future production crew um, what you can do is some people pick them when they're really small and tender like golf balls or you can let them grow bigger into early autumn and then you know they're what we call main crop so any different thing from a golf ball to sort of grapefruit size really um, and my final question unless we've got any more questions coming through mrs fish we've got no more questions um the final question i'm just going to take my fork with me because i never go anywhere without <coughs> a garden fork the final question is from shirley wright shirley wants to know should 
she be pruning black currants at the moment? Um, you can do if you haven't done them. Some people do them at this time of the year when they've finished fruiting, surely, or uh, others wait until the winter. But what you're aiming to do with your black currants is to cut out some of the shoots that had fruit on this year. Now these all grow sort of from the base, this lovely sort of almost a suckering shrub. So it's a case of getting that balance of old and new. So you try to leave in some of the new growth, cut out some of the oldest wood low down, that will grow, it won't flower next year, but the wood that's been made this year will. So yes, you can do that if you want to now. So I'm just gonna throw that down there if we've got no more questions. Somebody asked me the other day if their lawn gets very wet, and certainly ours did earlier, um, then what can you do if your lawn is standing in water? Well, you can do it at this time of the year. Um, then just get a garden fork and just prick over it with a garden fork on the wet areas, especially if it's a path that you walk on. What that will do will help the surface water run down because this year with it being dry, the surface is capped over and got quite hard in places. So this just allows a little bit of water to go down helps the drainage and more importantly it gets air down to the roots and keeps your grass looking really green and healthy and in a few weeks time we're going to do a bit of a lawn special and to get your lawn in good condition for the winter so <clears throat> the moment i've been waiting for i love being wet through out in the cold and wet they've got lights in the summer house they've got heater on there it's just subtropical i've got water running down my back off the top of my hat i'm absolutely soaked so we're going to try what jill made now so you two gonna come out please come out into the wet <clears throat> it won't hurt you so this is what jill made so this if i just bring that a little bit closer there to the camera this is the courgette dip uh, it's not the one that was made on Monday, by the way. She's made a fresh one today. And then this, just hold the bottle up, Jill, of your cucumber puree. Um, and we're going to try it. Now, we were going to do it with fizzy water, but I just think I deserve a, a drink tonight. <laughs> Something far stronger than Prosecco, so I will do. So this is just a bottle of Prosecco. Um, and what we do is... Before you do. Oh, before I do. Okay. Uh, Andrea Bradley says hi. Uh, so has Joy Elizabeth. She says hi. And so does Sandra Smith. Hello, everybody. So I hope you've all enjoyed being nice and warm in your house while I'm outside in the wet and I can't get the cork out. <laughs> oh, throw it up like that. So we're just going to pour some of this into there. It looks healthy, Mark. It's it very looks healthy. very healthy, doesn't it? Healthy. This is yeah. technically one of your one five, five a, day. a day. Absolutely. So, it, and it's, you would think... I'm just going to put plenty of Prosecco in them. <laughs> it, it is delicious and it's a really, really fresh taste. Um, okay, I don't care. Okay, I'm going to have a little bit of cucumber dipped into the courgette dip. Try some of that, Sean, because you're not getting any tea. <laughs> that is lovely. I mean, on a lovely summer's evening at the end of August, what could you want more? I'm really than glad you got this parasol. Fresh cucumber from the polytunnel. This lovely dip. And then we've used the cucumbers in this drink. There it is. I'm just going to bring it closer to you to have a look at. This is the fizzy cucumber, which is absolutely delicious. So well done, Jill. This is absolutely delightful. Yeah, fantastic. Well done, you two. I hope you've enjoyed being warm in there. <laughs> if you like Jill's recipes, and I know some of you have been following Jill's recipes, um, a little plug now, um, you can find lots of them in our book, which is called Gardening on the Menu. It's a book that Jill and I wrote a couple of years ago. Um, it's got 25 different fruit and vegetables in there, um, which I talk about, but then the best bit are Jill's recipes. There's about 100 of her recipes and quick cook tips. Um, so if you are interested in that, you can find it on our website, which is martinfish.com. You can buy it direct from there, or it's also on Amazon and uh, we'll even sign it for you as well. It's got the cucumber fizz in. This one is on our website, isn't it? So if you go onto the website, you can get the details of this recipe and many more. So thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. We really do appreciate it. I know the weather's pretty crappy, but it's been fun being outside. Um, and thank you to you two for being in the background because you make it all happen for us, don't you? So Sean, have you got to go in there and just twiddle with some credits now and play the music? Um, so thank you once again. Um, we will be back on Monday um, for Pots and Trials. Hopefully by then the weather's going to be just a, a little bit better and I'll be catching up with a few jobs in the garden. So we'll see you then. Take care and cheers. <laughs>